Good evening, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining us here on this Tuesday evening. Um, and thank you for the anticipation for uh, what we were supposed to talk about tonight. Uh, unfortunately, uh, a lot of the things did not take place that we wanted to take place uh, on the subject of the end times and how the virus impacts prophecy or does it uh, even at all. But uh, we will have that in the coming weeks. I just don't have it ready for you tonight. I, I do have ready, though, uh, a very important message uh, that I want everybody to be able to hear. Did you know that uh, right now over 22 million people have lost their jobs? Uh, we're right back now where we were uh, prior to 2008. So lots of progress has just been completely uh, eliminated when it comes to the economic growth and the pandemic has had some catastrophic results uh, as far as people losing their job. Many in our own fellowship uh, have lost their jobs after many, many years of employment. So how does all of this um, translate uh, into where we are right now? What, what about uh, financially, how are we going to make it? Financially, what adjustments do I need to be making in uh, my family and in my life? And so I called up uh, Chris Brown and I said, Chris, uh, I want you to do a video for me to encourage our people and to give them uh, some direction on how to adjust uh, during these uh, economic challenging times. And so nobody better in America to talk to us about that than Chris Brown. Uh, Chris was with Dave Ramsey for a number of years, and he's actually put into practice. I, I mean, God has taken him from uh, extreme situations to uh, actually prospering him greatly as a result of putting these principles in place. And so uh, I really wanted you to hear from him. Uh, that. Every one of us are going to be impacted financially by what's going on right now. And so uh, let's take some preventative measures. Uh, let's take some action steps now. Let's be proactive. And so when we are more impacted, we'll be ready for it. And, and I believe it'll be honoring and pleasing to the Lord. Uh, you know, he, he says uh, that we are to be good stewards and good managers of that which he has already given to us. And so uh, I want to help you. I want to equip you. Uh, I want to help you get ready. And so take a few minutes now and listen to this presentation uh, by Chris Brown, and you won't be sorry. Well, hello, my friends. I'm honored to share some thoughts with you today. Although I wish we were dreaming together instead of discussing things more along the lines of well, self-preservation, if you will, uh, during such uncertain times or even for crisis for some of you. I was so honored to spend some time with several hundred of you back in January uh, for our financial workshop, and I never imagined, not for a second, that we'd be connecting again this soon and in this way. But nevertheless, always a pleasure to connect with a church that has such a special place in my heart. Uh, Holly and I, my, my wife, absolutely love First Baptist and the whole Indian Trail area. Uh, Holly's actually there right now. Uh, she's spending time with her amazing family while I look after our farm here in Tennessee. Uh, a couple apologies for you. I have a hat on, I know, I'm sorry. Um, but um, you're looking at a man who is was barely left his house since March 16th. So out of kindness to you, I'm not exposing you to my uh, crazy quarantine hair situation. And, um, and don't mind these low ceilings. Uh, that's just uh, some of the fun that comes with a 200 year old farmhouse. So um, greetings from Tennessee. As you know, there's a lot of information that's coming out these days. Uh, everything from the latest number of documented cases, homeschooling instructions, the importance of not touching your face, and the appropriate distance to keep between us and any other human being with a pulse. It's a lot to take in for sure, but 
in the midst of all of this is this little green stuff called money. Of course, the heart behind money management during any economic condition is to realize that it's, it's God's money and not ours. That Psalm 24, 1 tells us that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That he's the owner of all the green stuff and not us. And 1 Corinthians 4, 2 tells us that we're called to manage faithfully everything that God has entrusted to us. So how do we do that during these times? Well, as many of you know, I am a huge Dave Ramsey fan, and I'm a big cheerleader of his money management um, baby steps, is what he calls them. It may be good to review those baby steps just so they can serve as kind of our backdrop today um, and uh, backdrop to how we kind of throttle these steps during these times. And, and those of you who are, are fans of the baby steps, maybe you can test yourself as a review to see if you've got them uh, memorized correctly. When someone reaches out and asks what they should do financially during any economic conditions, even before I get to the baby steps, I strongly encourage them to do a proactive budget before each, I wanna say that, before each month begins. It's really important that we all write down where every dollar is going to go every month. And it's important that we write it down again before the month begins. I tell people all the time that we would, we would never build a house without a blueprint. So we should not try to build a future or build a legacy without a blueprint either. You know, in Luke 14, 28, Jesus was talking about the cost of becoming a disciple. But he chose to use a financial analogy by saying this. He said, who would ever build a tower without sitting down first to count the cost? The reality is that many of us have money falling out of our pockets all the time. And money just leaving us all the time and we have no idea where it's going. Well, a budget will help clean all that up. And a budget will also help us become better managers or better stewards of everything that God has trusted us with. A budget will also remove a lot of the anxiety that comes with not being able to visualize all the moving parts. Seeing it all written down and having a plan, well, it takes away a lot of the anxiousness. And one time, I remember Dave Ramsey and I were speaking at Constitution Hall in Washington, D.C. And I remember him asking 5,000 people, Hey, if you were the CFO over you, Incorporated, would you fire you? And I remember the hush that went out over the crowd. Before doing anything, know where every dollar is currently going and purposely point every dollar where it should go from here on out. You know, Zig Ziglar once said, if you aim at nothing, you're going to hit it every time. John Maxwell says a budget is telling money where it should go instead of wondering where it went. And Andy Stanley, he says, everyone needs to be a knowing where your money is a going. <laughs> As you're putting together your budget, if you haven't already, keep these baby steps in mind as a framework for your financial plan. Baby step one is to make sure that you have a starter emergency fund, $1,000 saved in an accessible savings account or a money market account. Baby step number two is to get out of debt and stay out of debt using what Dave Ramsey calls the debt snowball. It's in baby step number two that we attack, attack, attack all non-mortgage debt. Proverbs 22, seven says the borrower is enslaved to the lender. And as believers, we were called to be the head and not the tail. The word attack is very intentional there. It's based off of Proverbs chapter six that has that same intensity attack. When it says in verse five, Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. Imagine with me, a gazelle being hunted. 
It doesn't just casually walk away. It doesn't just casually strut away. No, it intensely, it bolts, it's out of there. And that's the intensity that's needed. Baby step number three is to build up that starter emergency fund into what we call a fully funded emergency fund. Three to six months of expenses, possibly even more during these times. And again, don't think of this as an investment. Think of it as self-insurance. And of course, our eternal security and ultimate financial security, it's in the Lord. But we should operate with wisdom. Having this money in the bank will allow you to sleep better at night and also make better financial decisions because you're not desperate. Proverbs 21.20 20 tells us that in the house of the wise is choice food and oil. But fools gulp it all down. Well, food and oil, those were, that was legal tender back in that day. So that verse can literally be translated as the wise store up cash, but fools spend it all. That's how it translates. Now I'm going to fly through the next several steps, frankly, because they're less relevant these days during these uncertain times. But baby step number four is when we start to invest. No investing happens until baby step number four. You may ask why. The reason for that is because there's power in focus. And because we want to stabilize our present way before we start structuring our future. Baby step four is when we invest 15% of our income into a Roth IRA or a mutual fund long-term type instrument. Proverbs 13, 22 tells us that a good person leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And then baby step number five. So we start investing for our kids' college. If obviously, if it's applicable, you've got kids. We don't do this step before baby step number four because five doesn't come before four. <laughs> I'm just playing with you. There are other ways to go to college, but there's not another way to prepare for retirement. That's why four is before five. If we don't care of our retirement, if we don't take care of it, nobody will. And then it's actually possible that we could end up being a huge financial burden to those very same children. Baby step number six is when we aggressively pay off the house. And baby step seven is when we live and give like nobody else. Now, of course, we're giving throughout the entire process because giving is something that's for us, not something from us. But this is when our generosity goes to that whole nother level because now we have our entire income to our disposal and every dollar that comes into our hands is not obligated to the past but has an opportunity for the future, which is a lot of fun. That's our goal is to get there. So there's a little bit of foundation for us as we think through what to do and what not to do uh, during these times. It's during times like these that, uh, well, it's important to keep working on those baby steps. We're looking for a reason not to do them, but even during these times, we want to do them, right? Just like you've been. You're still going to be paying your bills on time, although having some more cash on hand is very important. So you may want to be a little bit less aggressive on paying off those debts at least until things, you know, they stabilize a little bit. I do get asked all the time, what should I do with this stimulus money? Well, my quick answer is to use it to go towards your financial goals or to speed up your baby steps, right? Wherever you're at, maybe it can speed you up, maybe even vault, kind of catapult you to the next step. For those of you that find yourself in an unstable situation, well, you want to make sure that your basic shelter, basic utilities, basic transportation, basic clothing, all those things, all those needs are met. Then put the rest into your emergency fund. But notice I said basic. Maybe repeat that with me. Basic, right? Or fundamental or essential needs. And those of you that have a very uh, stable income during this time, I know that you are unstable, I mean. You feel very tempted to cash out your 401k. I'm begging you, don't do it. It'd be a horrific mistake. The only time I would recommend cashing out a 401k is if you're facing foreclosure or a possible bankruptcy, and I really doubt that any banks are gonna be doing that to people during this time. I uh, also 
wouldn't delay your student loan payments uh, and uh, don't, don't stop paying your mortgage for sure. And uh, the other exception to this is uh, for those of you with the 401k, those of you that are already retired, that's you're kind of an exception, right? If you're not going to be penalized for pulling more out of your 401k and you need it, well, obviously, you're in a much different situation. And you may be saying, well, Chris, hey, something has to go. And I would agree. I would cut out as much discretionary spending as possible. And of course, our country knows all about discretionary spending. But stay current on all your debts, even if it means making that minimum payment until all this craziness is behind us. And then you can start to increase those payments. And of course, it goes without saying, if you can find a job, an extra job, definitely take it. And then obviously work as safely as you possibly can. Some other no-nos. Uh, one is do not take out a payday loan. No, this ranks up there with cashing out your 401k as the two biggest financial mistakes that are even possible, right? Also, don't get an equity line of credit. Don't do that, right? It's just going to dig you a deeper hole. You don't want to do that. And to those of you who have uh, possibly lost your jobs during this time, first of all, please accept my sincere apology. As somebody who grew up in that kind of unstable and anxiety-filled environment, my heart really does hurt for you. I would first check USA.gov to see if possibly you qualify for unemployment help right there within the state of North Carolina. Obviously, keep looking for work, but what I don't suggest is filing for unemployment if you can bring in at least 50% of your income by working another job, either quarter-time, part-time, or full-time. Right? Try to see if you can make some other budget cuts and pick up some extra work. You don't want to get into all that unemployment mess. For those of you who are running a business, hey, be sure to take advantage of the payroll tax deferment that's offered through either coronavirus aid or the Economic Security CARES Act. I would not recommend taking out an SBA loan. And this may surprise some of you because it's being packaged as free, kind of free money. But because history has proven that it's too difficult to get uh, these kind of loans forgiven, uh, I wouldn't mess with it. But I totally understand if that's not popular opinion. Um, so that's totally up to you on what you decide to do. I also get asked uh, quite often about uh, some of the financial decisions that Holly and I have made during this time. Uh, obviously, people are looking for some examples of some reasonable budget cuts uh, from people that handle finances quite a bit. A little backdrop to our financial situation. Uh, back during 2007 to 2009, that recession, Holly and I lost a ton of money as a result of overinvesting in real estate right before the drop. And um, unfortunately, we had to file bankruptcy. So because of that, we are extremely financially conservative ever since. And as a result of that conservative approach, Holly and I have gone into these uncertain times in a very good financial situation with plenty of cash, um, very accessible, uh, plenty of revenue streams, uh, that obviously lowers our risk on the income side. And in addition, our fixed expenses are extremely, an extremely low percentage of our income. So as a result, we're dealing with these times much differently than last time. And uh, my prayer for all of us is that uh, we would learn from our mistakes in a similar way. Uh, I just wish that I could learn from my previous mistakes uh, in other areas of my life as well. But uh, that might be another video for another time. Hopefully it doesn't frustrate you, but it's it's important I tell you that uh, going into some of our, our decisions that we're making. So why do I tell you that specifically? The first reason is because I want you to know that there's hope. When we're going through that back in 2007, 2009, even went all the way into 2011, we lost all hope. And the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 12, that Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Well, we were definitely sick. But God. I hope we all have a but God story. It's not 2009 anymore. It's 2020. And because of his principles, 
we find ourselves in a much better position. I want to tell you, if you're in a low financial spot right now, this too shall pass. His grace is more than sufficient. He will not forsake you. Take one day at a time and one wise financial decision at a time and it will pass. So even though Holly and I are in a good financial position through all this, we've still made some major decisions that uh, uh, hopefully will give you some ideas to where you can cut, maybe give you some brainstorms on how you can adjust these particular principles to your life. We had just given 50% deposit to a landscaping company to install three quarters of an acre of irrigation for our immediate yard right here around the house. And in mid-March, we asked the company to hold on the installation until we felt comfortable releasing the other 50%. The landscaping company totally understood, and they're currently sitting on all their equipment and supplies, ready to go. It's all in the warehouse until everything stabilizes. The Brown household also went through all subscriptions, the Netflix, the Hulu, the Amazon Prime, the Spotify, Pandora, the 5-4 Club, Stitch Fix, you name it. And we dialed them all back 75%. Holly and I have three Airbnb cabins right here on our Mule Town farm. And uh, we've seen an 80% drop in occupancy, obviously. So uh, we've become um, good at cleaning the cabins ourselves <laughs> instead of hiring them out professionally. I've also begun to do all the handyman work here at the farm instead of hiring that out as well. And that one was kind of a wrestle uh, because I know I'm in effect reducing another great person or great people, several people, their income during this time. And it was a decision that Holly and I definitely had to pray through um, and we feel comfortable on the other side. That's what God would have us do and for our family. I've had to really open myself up to other ways to generate income as well, uh, digitally, uh, for my family. Ways that feel different, ways that feel uncomfortable for me, but uncomfortable is where the growth happens, right? Growth is in the process. We've started to eat more casserole-based foods with lots of beans and rice uh, to feed our growing children. We have 14, 13, and 11 are our kids, uh, kids' ages. Foods that fill them up fast and inexpensively. You may have heard Dave Ramsey say in the past to be gazelle intense by eating rice and beans, beans and rice. Well, it works, folks. By doing that, you can save a ton of money in that ever-growing food budget. Uh, what else have we done? We've switched our, uh, to drinking 90% water as our beverage of choice. Uh, not only because it's free, but also because we need to increase our water intake anyway. So it's a total win-win. We found free ways to work out and remain fit, going for a walk, going for a run, uh, push-ups, rather than being part of a health club. We found that walking trails and recreational tennis, board games, movie nights, much less expensive ways for recreation and entertainment than concerts and sporting events and cruises. Of course, gas prices have really helped. They've gone down tremendously, but even more than that, we're not even using gas, we're not even driving. So that's been another expense saved for us. Obviously, haircuts as well. Although we have lost tens of thousands of dollars in income and future income as a result of all this, our family has decided not to take any stimulus money, any grants, any loans, or whatever we decide to call them. We don't shame anyone who chooses otherwise, obviously. But that's what we've chosen for our family is to not take this. That's another decision we've made. Now, so far, we have not talked about investing. If you find yourself uh, in a really good spot, feel really stable, and your family's not at a potential risk, I would encourage you to, to, to invest. Now, if you're unstable, definitely pause your investing, for sure. But, um, you know, step, baby step number four is a great place right now where you can be investing, but not if you're at a significant risk. Just stay the course and pause your investing, okay? Those of you who are cash heavy right now and you're looking for a, uh, for us, we're cash heavy, we're looking to leverage the market. I encourage you though to stay away from single stocks, right? There may be a, a temptation to invest in toilet paper companies, right? Let's not go there, right? Hand sanitizer companies. 
but I encourage you to stay the course with the long-term instruments, with long historical success track records and significant tax advantages like the Roth IRA. And those of you who may be in baby step number seven, way to go. Maybe you're looking to invest a little bit more during these times. I definitely encourage it because right now we're looking at like 2016, 2017 prices right now. Most funds are currently on sale, right? Growth stop mutual funds, index funds, those are the ones recommended. Two that I'd recommend researching a little bit, VTI and SPY, right? Let me be clear, I'm recommending that you research them and make your own decision. Never take an investment tip from anybody and just go do it, right? Always make an informed decision. Again, 1 Corinthians 4.2 says, those who are called to be managers, that's us, must prove faithful. Well, faithful involves research. One thing that Holly and I have not done is decrease our giving. The fact that we are healthy and that we still have plenty of income coming in is something that we are so eternally grateful for. So to decrease that part of our budget, well, we feel like it would contradict the faith that we say that we have. Now, Holly and I are strong believers that now, more than ever, that we should be as outward focused as possible. You see, when we over-focus on self-preservation, that turns into navel-gazing, which turns into discouragement, which turns into depression, and it happens so quickly. And this is the time that the world needs to see the church in America being as generous as possible. Not only money, but with our time, with just overall kindness. So there's a few thoughts to hopefully help you make decisions during this time. I'm thankful for your leadership, specifically Preacher Mike, for how he continues to shepherd us all so well. He pastored me in person for nearly a decade and has continued to pastor and inspire me for over a decade since. And I, I'm just grateful to be able to share some thoughts with some, uh, some incredible people. Uh, for those of you who are looking for more resources, one stop shop, okay? I recommend going to daveramsey.com. There are lots of websites out there about this very topic, but that's the one website that I have 100% trust in and know that you're not going to read something that's crazy there. If you'd like to connect further with me, you can reach me at chrisbrownonair.com. That's my website. Or on social media, I'm Chris Brown on air on all platforms. Let me pray for you. God, I'm thankful for First Baptist Church Indian Trail. I'm not thankful for the buildings, God, I'm thankful for the inspiring people. Father, I pray that you would bless them, that you would guide them during these times. I pray that their faith would be their foundation and that you would be their hope, not the government. I pray that all that we've talked about is not us worshiping your provision, but us seeking to worship you, our provider, by properly managing your provision. Father, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. See, I told you it was going to be good. Um, next week will be a, an entirely different subject. Uh, next week, I want to bring in uh, Dr. Charles Lowry, uh, a well-known nationally psychologist who speaks to Christian groups all over the country. Uh, I had the privilege of being with him last spring when he spoke to the Mega Metro Pastors Group. And, and I've never been more blessed and more touched uh, than I was then. It helped me greatly as a husband. So, you know, we're, we're confined uh, in a home. We're, we're spending more time with our spouses than ever before. That presents all kinds of challenges. You wouldn't believe some of the statistics that are coming out now uh, that are really consequential of having been together so long and it's impacting marriages negatively and 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 so I, i've asked dr uh, uh charles lowry to address this issue with us and so next tuesday night seven o'clock uh he'll be our speaker so be praying tell your friends and we'll see you then god bless